Well, as you can tell, that's not me. I had to bring in the big guns for this episode. Enjoy. All right, so I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Welcome back. Today, we're going to continue on with the gated shifter. So I'll bring you over here, and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. Bunch of focuses. There we go. All right, so here was version number one. Version number one, I did the, the kind of simple H pattern. I went ahead and I did the rounded knobs. You'll notice there that it's a little more slanted. This is when I accidentally took the measurement to say... Uh, Neutral was actually fourth gear. That was a mistake on mine. I should have checked that it was a neutral first. Here's version two. It's just a hair higher and it's kicked back a little bit so that it matches up just perfectly. So now I've got it in there. I've got the, the sizing right. I accidentally crushed the, the paper you know, template here a little bit ago. So I've got some spare steel. I'm going to mark out everything and uh, make it happen. All right, so I went ahead and cut apart the uh, version number two. And uh, I've got them labeled just uh, front, top, right, and left. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer everything to the plate of steel and start cutting it out. I did have a little mishap right here, as you can see. I had a situation where I realized, hey, look, it's going to be thicker than paper by using this thicker gauge steel. So I really needed to go ahead and trim a little off. And I went ahead and took care of that. And of course, my razor blade was not as sharp on the cutter as I thought it was. So this very first one uh, took a little bit of a hit, but the other ones turned out just fine for the most part. So go ahead and uh, transfer that over and uh, get going on that. Uh, that's coming. All right. So first off, you'll notice that uh, I'm doing this on a tote. And if you look in the background below the pegboard, you'll see a horizontal plank of wood or two. Uh, the top one was the, the main workbench. The bottom one was the shelf that I had. Had to take them out uh, because our uh, vehicle wasn't fitting in the garage quite right with all the room that we needed. So I lost my bench for a short time as I figure out how to do it. Anyway, uh, so that's why I'm left with a brick, a vise, uh, and a tote to essentially cut up everything and uh, use as my makeshift bench. Ugh, it's frustrating. So, uh, as you can tell, I work on this a little bit every day, and, uh, oh yeah, that's what I woke up to today. Just a lot of snow. Hey, you know, let's go back here. So, one of the things I'm going to be working on, so I got these cut up last night, and the next step is to bevel all the edges of the steel. So essentially as I weld them together, I don't want a, an open end like that. I really want it to be nice and beveled. So I'm gonna get out my little belt sander and I'm just gonna bevel them back so they'll sit nice and flush against each other. Anyway, sorry for all the uh, fast forward motion this round. Essentially, I just wanted to show how much work actually goes into a small project like this. It does take a lot more time than people realize. And it's kind of worth it. I mean, if you're putting in this amount of time, having fun, uh, getting things done, you know, it feels good to look at the finished product afterwards. Now, I'm still a long way away from that finished product. And uh, even this episode, I won't even get the chance to install it and enjoy it yet. But uh, it's coming. And I know I'm going to get it done shortly.
got them all cut up. Now I'm gonna take some duct tape. I'm gonna tape them together. I'm probably gonna put that duct tape near the top edge. That way I can tack the bottom. Go ahead and remove the duct tape, clean off the residue, and then tack the top. All right, let's go for it. All right, so I went through, I started tacking everything. This is why I only wanted to do tacking is because the welder that I had at the time set up, it's just a little wire fed welder. I really didn't want to sit there and do all those seams by using a wire fed. I really wanted to use a TIG, um, but I have access to a TIG and uh, I get to share that in a moment. pattern cut out pretty rough I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up with a little Dremel tool try and make that a lot better All right, so right around now, you're probably noticing that I'm not in my garage. I'm actually at my brother-in-law's place. Now, some of you probably wondered, hey, there's the name on this, uh, this channel, Two Nuts DIY. If you ever wondered why it's called Two Nuts DIY, it was actually because of this guy. Originally, we started out working together. We always referred to each other as kind of nutty, and uh, it wasn't double the new endo too much. But uh, this is his shop. Now, it's kind of fun. He is great at the things I suck at, and I'm great at the things that he sucks at. Works out well together. It's really quite a fun. He is the owner of Utah Powder Works. He is an amazing powder coater. He specializes in rims. Um, you, know, you can see here he's done a little bit of dirt bike parts. He's got uh, this amazing gray set of rims that he did. It almost looks factory coated the way he did it as well as some uh, amazing kind of two-tone that he did here with the golden black on these uh, three-piece. So he does some really great work. I'll have to do more of a proper introduction and show you some of the neat things about him. He's got some very cool vehicles. He's a huge car nut, just like me. And uh, him and I love opportunities to uh, get together during family gatherings, break off and go do car stuff. It makes every single holiday a blast to be around. All right, so I've got it in, I test fitted it, it runs through the gears just fine. I think uh, kind of my next thing though is I'm going to work on getting some fabric on the under, in the inside I should say, to go ahead and cover some of the inner workings of it. Because you can see down there, there's kind of the inner workings, how it looks, everything in there. I want to get that covered up. On the outside, no, I'm not going to leave it raw steel. What I am going to do is wrap it in some type of pleather or other material to go ahead and cover it up. I like the look of um, 
basically just kind of that covered material. It seems more warm and inviting. If I rest my hand here on a cold morning, I don't really want to feel pure steel just resting against my hand. And uh, it also allows me to kind of do a few other different things. So more to come. Stay tuned.